is Evernote. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you all. So you see, you don't, <laughs> you don't need much introduction <laughs> here, apparently. <laughs> and I think it's a great transition between Alexander and, and you, Phil, because... It's a very tough uh, act to follow, so I'm going to seem uh, small and insignificant in comparison. So tell me about, for the half of a room who doesn't use Evernote and, and should, I, by the way, I'm running the web on uh, the program I've prepared entirely on Evernote. What's great about it, let me do your pitch. <laughs> it's, I cannot live without it myself. And I, at the beginning, I thought, ah, Google, Google Docs is fine, and, 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 but there is something else you bring here. And um, it's just so easy. You, s you, you, s you put your notes about this session, for example, and I have them on all my devices. You're doing so in interesting and tough, complicated. So you're multi-platform. Um, you're pretty much on all the devices, on all the platforms. And, uh, and it syncs, and it's great. But I should shut up, because... Uh, you are here to talk. <laughs> Tell me about the vision. How, you, how do you start? What's your vision? How do you describe Evernote? What is Evernote? Well, we're trying to build the, the world's memory. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> See, I, I described you as, um, yeah, we can t store notes, and you're saying <laughs> we're... Well, that's the exactly what Alexander is saying. The idea was, um, I think, really basic, and I don't think it's, it's our idea. I think this idea has been floating around for thousands of years, right? Nobody is fully happy with their, uh, their meat brain. Uh, everyone wants something better. Everyone wants a, a better memory, a better brain. And we just thought a few years ago was the right time to actually try to do it. The technology had gotten to a point where it was feasible. So our, our goal is to uh, be a permanent and trusted place for all of your lifetime memories. Everything important that happens to you, always know that you have it in Evernote. All lifetime memories. And when you started, well, uh, what we was the original idea? You had a problem you wanted to fix? or Well, I realized that I wasn't remembering nearly as much stuff as, as I wanted to. Um, the, the company actually came together from, uh, there were two teams that came together in uh, 2007. Uh, there was a team that uh, goes all the way back to the Apple Newton days. They did a lot of the really interesting work on the, on the Apple Newton. Uh, and that was started by uh, Stepan Pachikov, who's this uh, very uh, brilliant uh, Russian-American entrepreneur, inventor. And then uh, I brought a team in to actually do the productization. And so we launched, uh, we, s we reformed the company in 2007 and launched a service about two and a half years ago. Three years ago, yeah. Uh, the summer of, yeah, 2008. So it's been about, uh, about two and a half years. And it's just been a, it's just been a crazy ride. So you have a little, you have, you, had a few, you have a few numbers to show us, a few slides. I don't know if we can bring them up, Sabine and the team. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, one of the things we try to do is just be fairly open with, uh, with and try stats. to put them on Ustream as well. Um, I, I know those, you know, uh, you guys watching on Ustream have been uh, complaining that sometimes the slides don't show up. It's not easy technically. We're doing it. I mean, it's not easy. Not easy to think about everything. So I hope it, they show up, please. So we have about um, uh, we, we just passed five million uh, registered users a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we're actually five million. Five million, yeah. Wow. And we're, we're, we might be six by the end of the year. Uh, we're adding about 18,000 new people every day. Phil, sorry to interrupt. This says proprietary and confidential, the slide on the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. So no one, no one uh, share this. Oh, right? okay. No. Yeah, well, so don't tweet this. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, it, it used to be when this was the, the board presentation a couple oh, of weeks ago. But uh, uh, this is uh, the, the theme that I hold you on the web is uh, we share confidential board slides. Of course. Where is, where is, we're only the top. Uh, Twitter trend since yesterday, <laughs> number one. So go ahead. Um, so yeah, so, so about 18,000 new people every day, and almost completely organically, wow. so through word of mouth, through blogs. You know, we haven't done any advertising, any SEO. We haven't paid for any users. Um, really worldwide. So it's uh, currently about 57% in the U.S. Uh, and by in the next couple of months, the U.S. is going to go into the minority. So it'll be less than half of our users in the U.S. Yep. Uh, Japan is going huge for us, but, but everywhere else, including Europe, is, is, is really booming. Um, and uh, you see kind of the, the fastest growing countries there, and there's some real surprises, like Spain, in the past uh, three months, has just exploded. Any uh, Spaniards in the room? <laughs> Thank you. I have to, I don't know why we're getting popular in Spain. It's up 62% uh, in the past uh, three months. Uh, so my mission is in, in January, I'm going to go to Spain. And Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 that might be it. So anyway, I'm going to head over there in January and do a lot of research and eat a lot of uh, eat a lot of Spanish food and figure out uh, why we're popular there. And so you're 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 huge in Japan. You can't move when you land and you walk around in the streets. They, you're not like Carlos Ghosn, but it's 
coming oh, closer? Uh, it, it's it's kind of crazy in Japan. It's it really, crazy. It, it feels like we're like seven minutes into our 15 minutes of fame in, in Japan. Uh, it's a little bit odd. I, 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 um, there are 14 published books about Evernote in, in Japan. 14? 14, yeah. Um, there's yeah, one. you did a launch at the store in SoftBank. Yeah, and yeah you, people the Apple was store. And oh, the Apple store, yeah. Uh, we, we, did, we did a bunch of stuff. There was a... Um, I was in a big bookstore in Japan a couple of weeks ago, and I went up to the, to the book section. There was actually an Evernote section. It was like a section of the bookstore was called Evernote. <laughs> and um, there's about 14 different books. And then I saw something weird and, and disturbing out of the corner of my eye, and I looked at it, and there was a big sign of me, of my picture, and I was saying something in Japanese in a speech bubble. I had no idea like what I was saying or who took this picture or why. Um, so there was actually a... So you ask, and what were you saying? Uh, well, uh, uh, um, it, there was actually a good motivation to try to try to learn enough Japanese to be able to read it. So, and I recommend that to everyone. A great way to learn a foreign language is to see a picture of yourself saying something in that language and be motivated to, to learn. Well, especially in Japanese, saying. you know, you never know. Exactly. You don't have a manga on yourself, right? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Carlos Ghosn has uh, one. He has yeah. a full full manga. That, that is pretty amazing. I think I was saying something like. Uh, 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 which I think means something like, uh, this is awesome. Uh, and that does sound like something I would say. So it, it, it's plausible that I had actually said that uh, at some point. Do you have numbers you can share with us? Sure. Uh, so like revenue and, and stuff, like things you don't show anywhere. Uh, absolutely. It says confidential, so, so yeah, well users. This one doesn't anymore. Returning right? users. I'll let, you, I'll let you go through that. Um, so here's kind of how it works. So, so uh, we have the normal user growth, you know, about six, almost six million people. Uh, that's all great, uh, but we're a business, uh, and our philosophy is uh, long-term greedy. So we're here to make money, but we want to be long-term greedy. We never want to do anything that optimizes money in the short term at the expense of long-term value. Yep. And that's the role of, of a good investor, is to is to give you that is to give you that opportunity. Uh, but you have to track, you have to actually show that, that it's working. So what we do is uh, we do this cohort analysis. Um, and here's an example. We basically take uh, every person who signs up to Evernote and we assign them to, to this group or cohort by the month that they joined. So for example, this shows the, the very first month we had, uh, March of 2008, which is closed beta. And there was about 31,000 people that signed up for Evernote in that month. Uh, last month we added more than half a million, so it's quite a big growth. But this 31,000 people signed up and you can see how many of them came back in each subsequent month. So you see like right in the first month, there's this big drop off, like 60% of the people don't come back after the first month. Yep. And then in the second month, you know, another five or 10%. And that's, you know, pretty normal for a free web service. Yep. But then after that, everyone who's been at Evernote for two months, they never leave. Like it's completely flat. Like once it gets under your skin, once you start recognizing that it's your second brain, you, you just feel really naked without it. And so we have this tremendous long-term retention we're trying to do as much as possible to reduce that initial drop-off, basically making it easier to use, a little bit less intimidating. But once we've got you into Evernote, people just stay forever. Okay. But then what, what really happens <laughs> is uh, when you layer all these together, the, the little red line at the bottom is the, is, the, is the March, and then you see every other month on top of it. And so oh, so the colors are the months. Yeah, the colors are all months. And you like analytics, don't you? It, it, you know, it kind of looks like a, like a sedimentary analysis or something, right? You get this like compressed layer at the bottom. These are your long-term return users. So like every month starts pretty wide and then gets, you know, narrow in the first two months and then like stays more or less the same thickness. And it's, wow. that, it's that compressed layer that's your, your core return user base, about 30% of, of your total users. Those are kind of the active long-term return people. Um, and of course, we can try to reactivate the ones that haven't come That's back. That's a great analysis. But, I love it. But this this works really well for us. But what really gets cool is when you translate that into revenue. Uh, and we're totally premium. Yep. And we never push anyone to pay. We right. want people to use everything Evernote is for free. free. Every, every plus, plus, it, it, you know, like you don't even have a real incentive to pay. Like it's in the, it's, a, it's a freemium model based on the traffic exchange. But you never hit that traffic. Yeah. So it's like, hey guys, if you want to pay, that's fine. But yeah, That's I mean, how you do it. There's a few nice features for, for freemium. Uh, you get you know, better handling for attached files and PDFs and a few yeah. things like that. But when we ask people who pay, uh, why did you switch? Uh, the number one answer is always because I love Evernote. It's yep. not for any particular feature. So what we see is um, that top chart is the same cohort, the same March of 2008 in terms of numbers. And um, that first circle on the left is in June of 08 is when we first started charging money. We first launched premium accounts. 
And at that point, we had about 11,000 people left in that cohort. And those 11,000 people, about one half of 1% started to pay yep. us. And we got about $300 or $500 that month in revenue from just those users. But then every month after that, more and more decide to start paying. And two years later, uh, that same 10,000 people is bringing in more than $10,000 a month, every month. Wow. Uh, so the conversion much, rate how much keeps I'm going sorry. up. How much revenue you said? Per well, month? we have about... Oh, you uh, haven't said it yet? I haven't said it yet. Um, I, I, I don't want to give you the exact revenue, but I'll tell you how many premium users we have, and you, know, you can multiply by $5 okay, a month ahead. and whatever. So, uh, I think we have about 160,000 premium users, Okay, and you roughly. have $25 per year? Uh, it's 5 bucks a month. Five bucks a month, uh, so 500,000 a month, or, okay. Or 45 bucks a year, and, and then we have a few other revenue streams from licensing and things like that, so that's kind of the, the base level. The reason why I love Phil is that no private companies share as much as Phil does, and there are a lot of, art, you know, actually stories on TechCrunch where you, you know, you're like, whatever, here is my revenue, here is my number. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> there's, um, okay. The reason we don't want to give the, the total numbers is some of it comes from, um, you know, contracts where we do licensing and, and those are confidential, yeah, yeah. But, but all of the stuff that's just our users doing it, you know, I can tell you what that baseline right, is. Right, but you have competition. Most people think I'm not going to share this because I have competition, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, I guess so. But, you know, what we decided at Evernote is, um, uh, in none of, so Evernote is my third company. Yeah. And my previous two startups and all, and the companies that bought my previous two startups and every other company I've been involved with, we always had one or two competitors that we fixated on from the beginning. You know, like, ah, these are our mortal enemies, we must crush these people. And never once did the people that we fixate on as the competition, never once were they even remotely relevant to the success of a company, at, you know, at the end, after two or three years. Like, it never happened. Yep. Like, yeah, there's competition, but if you lay out all of the things that are, gonna, that are likely to kill your company, competition really, like at, at an early stage, it, it's not one of the biggest So you risks. don't even worry about it? Like you don't look at it? You don't well, we don't pay attention because... Um, but how about if Google or Facebook or Microsoft, or like you're doing, you're doing kind of a very obvious service, like storing my notes. Yeah. I know, you know, your lifetime memory, but like if you look at what you're doing, you, you're really competing with Microsoft and Google and... Uh, who else? I mean, it's document management, right? Well, so yeah. they give away everything for free, and they, they are really big, and they can hurt you. So you don't worry, don't mind. Well, it's not that we don't worry. It's that we don't take any action because of that worry, because yep. that doesn't help you make a better product. Okay. You know, there's, there's a, you know, I worry about an asteroid hitting the Earth and wiping everything out, and it'll probably happen at some point, but like it does, that doesn't shape the way I run my business, because I, I can't actually do anything about it. Um, so we just try to pay 100% of the attention to making the best product possible. Uh, we don't really think about what other people are doing. We're not trying to look backwards. Show uh, me more numbers, Phil, because I, I see I, I, I've, I've could I could spend two hours, three hours talking about this, and uh, oh. we're already a little late. So. so what happens is when you get that, that bottom graph that, yeah. that shows the revenue per cohort, yeah. when you stack these up, you get this. So this is the, the same cohort analysis per month, and this is... Wow. This is about six months out of date, just because it takes a while to do these these charts. But the so you're now five hundred thousand plus per uh, month. A little bit more, yeah, yeah. This is this is a little bit out of date, but the shape is, is all the same. Um, and um, yeah, I think so. Our so you can say you're a proof of freemium model at work. That that's great because yeah. I I always meet so many journalists or like who tell me freemium never works and. Yeah, it, wor it works great. Well, for us it works great, but yeah. we have some some characteristics which may be difficult to replicate. But for us it works great because what, what you see is every month we get more value, more revenue out of every previous cohort. Yep. So the whole point is the longer you use Evernote, the the more you fall in love with it. And in 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 market segments where you don't have to pay for anything, people pay for what they love. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, the more time we give them to fall in love, the more likely they are to pay for it. And that's why we just, yesterday, we just announced um, sponsored accounts. So we had tons of demand for companies and schools to buy Evernote Premium for their employees. And we always just kind of turned them down. We said, we, we can't quite do that yet. We just launched it yesterday, uh, basically for this reason. Uh, we're not going to sell anything to anyone. We're not going to become an enterprise software company yep. all of a sudden. But we're going to make it easy for everyone who's already using Evernote at work and who loves it to just do it officially, to yep. do it. Uh, you know, with the blessing of their of their school or employer or something, and uh, we think this will significantly ramp up the uh, the revenue. Do you have more to show? Because uh, we're kind of out of time. Oh, the last thing is just the conversion rate. That's so the last one. Yeah. So everyone asks what the conversion rates are. What are the conversion rates for premium? And uh, the short answer is it doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, because 
this is the most common misperception, right? It doesn't really matter what percentage of your users pay. What really matters is the total number that pay yeah. and the cost to get there. Um, and the easiest way to get a million people to pay may be to get a billion people to fall in love with you and have, you know, 1% of them throw also you some the money. Also, the more active they are, you get a 20% conversion rate. Our, our, our oldest users, the people that have been with us for more than two years, 20% of them are, Just are pay. paying. Yeah. Well, I guess it's because you get, you get scared at one point that, like, you have mo all my life. I mean, like, it's amazing. Like, I don't even want to tell you what, you know, you have, like, I've stored everything. So, so then you're like, if everything is there, I'd better have this company succeed and, and stay up and, and help them. And well, although, you know, uh, it's really important for us that everyone knows that they can, they can take all their data out at any time. In fact, you have all your data locally on your computer, in Evernote, in open machine-readable formats. Yep. And we actually make it easy for you to take that and, and, and go anywhere else you want. Uh, we want people comfortable that they can leave at any time and that the data is theirs and we don't own it and we never mine it and we never look at it. So it's your data. You can always have it. And uh, so if people know that they can leave whenever they want, I think they're much more likely to stay for the rest of their lives. And that's really what we want. Phil, give me, um, just to finish, because we're out of time. By the way, Phil is the nicest friend, entrepreneur, you know, I, he's amazing in sharing, in, in sharing with you his knowledge. Like each time, I, and I did that many times. I asked Phil for advice. Um, and like it's so well, maybe now you'll get fired emails, <laughs> but just ask Phil, you know, what you think and what do you think? And he's so, uh, I mean, he shares here and he will share with you as well. So, what can you share just a few that as closing remarks, uh, um, like advice for entrepreneurs who are just starting something, what to focus on, how do you see it to get to a, you know, a success like this? I know it's hard, but like, what, what are your top three? advice for an entrepreneur? I mean, I think a lot of what Alex said was exactly right. I, uh, I think uh, the way I look at it, uh, the worst reason to start a company is to, is to make money. Uh, because frankly, it's just being an entrepreneur is a really bad way to make money on average. Uh, most, 95, 99%, depending on how your companies fail. Uh, so if you're, if you're in it for money, you really should just get a job you know, instead. So don't think about money, uh, right? But if you want to save the world, or I actually say, not so much change the world, but actually save humanity you know, save humanity from boredom or mediocrity or the city of Paris shutting down for a day because of one inch of snow, if something you can save humanity over, uh, then, you can, then you can start a company. And if you're uh, really, if you're infatuated with your idea, really infatuated with it, like you have to, you have to visibly love your idea more than you love anything else, uh, then uh, that's, a, that's a good start. You know, you're, 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 you're much more likely to actually get anywhere. Thank you so much, Phil. Please thank you. Uh, thank, help thank me you. thank Phil and uh, just thank line you. up. For those of you, tell thank me you so we don't have enough networking at the web when he exits. Please, you know, like jump on Phil; he'll be super <laughs> happy to help you. But um, I, uh, I was really uh, honored to have you here, and good luck with uh, changing the world. Then, thank you. It's my honor to be here, and I just got to say the production values of this place are better than anything I've ever seen. Oh, and I'm just super psyched to be wearing makeup. <laughs> I, any opportunity I have to wear makeup, I'm always going to take it. Well, uh, well, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, we have a, we have a, a team there. Uh, so cool. Well, thanks for those thank kind you. words, Phil. Thank you. And you'll be back next year. Absolutely. Very Wouldn't cool. Wouldn't miss it. Excellent. Thank you. If you keep the same growth, it's going to be uh, amazing. I'll update it. We'll see how it goes. I, I hope Alexander invests in you. That that that's going to be uh, something. Yeah, maybe by next year we'll be ready to meet us criteria. I think there at this go. point it'd be a, a billion dollars time. next year. Maybe. maybe. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Congratulations. Thank you.